Welcome everyone. Welcome. My name is Taranjit Singh Rai and uh, it's it's a very proud moment today to interview the founders of Mand or Monday. Should, what should I call? Monday. Monday. So, yeah, very proud moment uh, to interview founders of Monday Network. So, yeah, please over to you uh, Sandeep and Pratik. Let's start just by giving a little bit of introduction starting from you Sandeep. Hey guys, hi. Uh, this is Sandeep. I'm the co-founder at Monday Network. Uh, I've been a serial, serial entrepreneur all my life. I started three companies before I to Monday. Uh, my last company is a, is in Web two. Uh, it's a cloud kitchen uh, chain that I started and exited to one of the largest uh, food aggregators in India. So after working with aggregators in Web two for a little bit, I got super pissed uh, with how aggregators work in general, how they control the suppliers and extract money out of them. Uh, so I, I mean, having a theoretical fascination, fascination for decentralization thus far. After seeing how how bad Web two is, I wanted to build something good for the world. That's how I sort of came into Web three uh, and started Manda Network because uh, I thought I could I could do some meaningful work with my time in Web three. Over to Pratik. Awesome. Hey guys, uh, Pratik here. I'm from a tech background. Uh, have I started coding? Uh, it's been almost a decade now. Uh, work for a lot of early stage startups. Uh, in 2020 i moved to web3 uh, worked with uh, likes of azirex uh, big crypto companies as well seen a lot of uh, you know ups and downs the whole life cycle of development of the projects uh, how it gets built from scratch till scales to millions of users uh, so after working for uh, around 5 6 companies i realized uh, i am switching jobs a lot and that's when i realized actually it's not because I'm not uh, enjoying the work. It's because uh, actually I want to do something of my own. So meanwhile, uh, me and Sandeep met uh, on uh, on a course. Actually, Sandeep was running an online course which I joined. Uh, after that, uh, we started discussing about what uh, uh, what the ecosystem is missing. What should we build to add a lot of value? And that's when uh, Monday Group uh, born. fantastic yeah. so so that that leads us to to basically ask what is monday so i think it is question for sandeep here if you can just tell me briefly succinctly what is monday and how is it different from other proof of identity uh, platforms yeah so uh, before i get to uh, what is monday i'll give you a small background of about where the whole thought process started uh, back in 2020 2021 when we, when i am personally looking at crypto uh i sort of felt hey this whole thing is about tokens you know uh tokens going up going down swap 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 you know i mean why is i mean if you if you look at any technology in the past like if you take social media or you know uh, a lot of technologies which actually went to billions of people they're fundamentally about people right in the sense uh so i felt there is way too much representation for tokens on web3 uh and and you know i mean people are by default anonymous Uh, or you know, I mean, they're as good as bots. In other words, uh, uh, so I mean, I thought, is there a way can, we can build representation for human beings on chain without having to spoil their privacy or anonymity? Right? Privacy and anonymity is still important, but we need to humanize the chain still, right? So that's where the whole intention started. You know, how how do I humanize the chain? Mm-hmm. Then uh, went down the rabbit hole for a little bit. Then the best way I found to do that is credibility, right? Uh, hey let people stay private let people stay anonymous but if there is a way in which we can bring in credibility right uh, you know credibility can be a score it can be a certificate it can be a nf non transferable nft which is an sbt that they can show off so all of these things together uh, you know if you think about a credibility problem then if you can build credibility profiles of users on chain then we can start humanizing blockchains you know we can we can start making people important on blockchains so that's where uh, that's where the whole idea of credibility came up mm-hmm. now identity and credibility are similar themes with some new nuanced differences right now when i when i talk about credibility uh, we are talking more mostly in a probabilistic sense right uh, when we talk about identity we talk in an absolute sense right in the sense uh, when we say identity of somebody like we we need we need to talk about somebody verifying them somebody uh, you know submitting a certificate right in credibility that's not absolutely necessary right uh, for example if if i know that 10 others are human beings and if if they tell me that you are also a human being right you are a real human 
then i will probabilistically take that as a human uh, you know take you as a human being probabilistically right mm-hmm. so we at credibility we are more concerned with probabilistic models not absolute models of identity right uh, so 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 that's the that's a theoretical uh, you know uh, freedom we assume when we talk about credibility which we don't assume when we talk about identity right sure. uh, now identity narrative is our, so that makes identity narrative also part of the credibility narrative mm-hmm. right uh credibility is a larger probabilistic narrative within which there is a scope for identity as well you know we we sort of look for proof of personhood we sort of look for uh, citizenship certificates or whatever it is that identity talks about a lot uh we but we also look at that data more probabilistically and say okay fine if they are there this person is more credible right uh, so that's our approach to humanize the chain that's the fundamental difference between the identity problem and credibility problem so we look at ours as a, as a credibility project more, more than an identity project but we encompass the features of identity projects as well sure okay i think that that is a great explanation and yeah it is it boggles my mind that uh, we have this you know i, I know you very well uh, where in india you have land certificates and everything can be you know shifted towards a digital stage and if we have a credible a uh, network or credibility score or something like that there will not be any fraud <laughs> there will not be any corruption down the line anyhow let's not go there let's not become philosophical philosophical uh tell me more about the the mande currency uh, uh token uh, you started with saying there are too many tokens so let me give it back to you and and ask how does uh, mand token uh, accrue value right so uh i mean right away practically uh, there are models in which uh, my mandate token accrues ex- ex- value but the idea here is fundamentally to build a dapp ecosystem on mandate itself mm-hmm. uh, around credibility right the moment the credibility problem is solved uh, we can do 100 different things we can do a peer to peer on off ramps for example right mm-hmm. i trust you you trust me based on trust you like change crypto for fiat right uh, that's a simple example we can do non collateral lending right mm-hmm. uh, i look at credibility score of somebody and give them a loan or we can even go to a much more consumer tech extent and say i can probably build dating communities uh, you know where people get to be anonymous but but use their credentials to start dating or getting to know each other right uh, a, a much more subtle version of it is uh, some sort of decentralized uh, private trust gated communities you know you, you know that everybody in this community is trustworthy because they have a certain credibility score but again everybody gets to stay private so 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 there are so the possibilities of this technology are immense right so the idea is you know once you have a strong uh, layer of credentials on mandate network uh, we see like a multitude of applications getting built on top of it mm-hmm. uh, which which basically pay pay for gas for using the mandate infrastructure as well as using the mandate credentials mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so the, you know there are two dimensions to it right like one is you know the regular ecosystem gas fee uh, narrative the other one is you know all these dapps being on mandate because mandate has all these credentials on the mandate network right sure. so that's why our staking uh, staking rewards are also twofold uh, one direction of our staking rewards is this whole governance staking uh, which is uh, typical to roll apps on dimension where you sort of stake on your governor and then you get your staking rewards another aspect of our staking is credibility staking So credibility staking is an entirely new concept that Mandate is introducing, which you can already try on the testnet. Probably Pratik will throw more light on it. So basically, you can stake on somebody saying that they are trustworthy, right? Uh, and that gets your rewards. Wow. Right? It's a peer-to-peer staking mechanism. So, so, so these are the utilities of Mandate, right? Like essentially, you can use Mandate for uh, building your credibility profiles, uh, for DApps to sort of look at you and then uh, you know give you loans or whatever. So there's an entire DApp ecosystem coming up. So it's a multi-fold value proposition, both in terms of credibility as well as governance. That's how Mand acquires value. But okay. if you would like to add anything on that, before you uh, answer uh, further, because next question which I have is actually for Pratik, which is basically what is Mand's token economy. So why don't you add and answer the the question about the token economy as well? Thanks. Yes. So like Sandeep mentioned. Um, I, I i you know uh, it's there is a very good line to which fits uh, the credibility staking uh, very well which goes like this uh, so you stake your money for someone else's reputation so it's like uh, when you are staking in so, to someone else it's basically denoting that uh, you believe uh, the other person how reputed he is or credible he is so you know that the the, the, uh, the whole system is built around that 
Now coming back to tokenomics. Uh, so we designed our tokenomics keeping in mind of uh, you know sustainability. Uh, how we sustain the project in a long term. How we get adoption so as to uh, build this whole network of credibility, right? The, cred- the network of credible people on our network. Uh, so uh, we start with our uh, twenty mil tokens uh, in Genesis, which is twenty uh, percent uh, of the supply, and then uh, the the inflation goes fifty four percent. It starts with fifty four percent, but it halves every two years. So it will end up at hundred million total supply, and uh, the inflation rewards again is distributed uh, in three streams. So one is uh, the governance. As Sandeep uh, spoke about, 30% goes to governance, 30% goes to the credibility stakers, and the rest 40% is distributed uh, for all the contributors to the platform. Again, the community as well and the developers of the protocol itself as well. So uh, this is how the tokenomics is structured. Okay. Yeah, this is great and <laughs> pretty interesting uh, model, I would say. But 100 million is very, very, I think, sustainable. Um, yeah, you can have billions and billions of supply and then you inflate like crazy, but it's important to have a max uh, supply and, and I think 100 million probably is the sweet uh, spot there. Two things I want to add uh, to this thing. One is uh, the 100 million happens over 20 years, right? It's not happening anytime soon. Sure. We start with 20 million and we get to 100 million in 20 years. So we're thinking that long term about this project, okay. right? Yeah. Uh, because when, when you're coming up with the fundamental technology, you need to, you need to see that longer picture, right? Uh, yeah, that's all something I want to add. I, I think you both are pretty young, so I'm, I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you will see the max supply in 20 years for sure. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, so very, very interesting airdrop model. And I was joking with some cucumber jokes that cucumbers are 98% water, humans are 70% water, so we are actually 98%, 70% of cucumbers. Anyhow, the scare route. The scare root idea. First of all, before you even tell me, where, who, who came up with this scare root of uh, proportional to your dim uh, staked? Who came with this idea and explained to me like you will talk to your granny? Right. So I'll take this question. So I came up with the idea. All right. <laughs> now, if you if you think of it like a simple model, right, you can do two things. One is, hey, everybody is equal to me. I'll give you equal airdrop to everybody on the net, every staker, right? That's one extreme of the model, saying that, you know, I would you, I mean, now you have all these civil farmers and all of that, that problem exists. But one way of looking at it and saying is, I would you equal to all of them, right? Another way of saying is, no, no, I will do a one-to-one proportion to uh, DYM token. Uh, so whoever has taken more DYM will get more rate drop, right? That is one more model. Now, now uh, intellectually, the problem started for me first on what should I be doing? Should I be giving equal to everybody? Or should I be doing, uh, you know, proportional to stake? Mm-hmm. Now, if I say equal to everybody, uh, then there are problems with civil farmers uh, and stuff like that. Stuff like it goes on, right? You cannot sort of the problem accentuates. If I say no, no, I'll give pro- proportional to the DYM stake, then it, it's like, okay, what is? Uh, where are we sort of uh, showing what Mandan network is? Mm-hmm. Because again, you know, we are we are we're telling all this story and narrative about human beings and making people important on chain. But then we are again giving incentivizing people proportional to the, the wealth they already have. Uh, so we need to have a middle ground for all this, right? So that's when I came across uh, how Osmosis did their fair drop. Uh, this was an Osmosis launch on the first one on, 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 on Atom, right? So Osmosis, what Osmosis did was they did a square root drop. Uh, they took all the auto, Atom stakers and they proportionated their, their, their drop. Uh, to the root of atom uh, that they stake, right? I'm like, why don't we do this? There is somebody who has already done that. Uh, so let's let's also do it. So this is the overall reference, right? Now, now, now this is a. We are dealing with two design problems here. On one side, you have civil farmers. On other side, you have real human beings whom we don't want to do justice to, right? So we thought square root is the right balance between both. Uh, of course, it is a little experimental. Uh, we did a lot of data analysis on DYM staker charts and stuff like that to look at the age of wallets. And what we figured is uh, the civil farming is not very rampant as of yet yeah. because there is not, not not a lot of people who rewarded this way in the past, right? So we estimated it to be less than 10, 15, 10 to 15 percent. So we went ahead and took the risk and did this. Uh, I, even though people didn't feel, you know, I mean, what we have done. But if you look at uh, some of the polls which came yesterday, yeah. there is a very nice distribution right like one to five man or 33 percent right like so so there is a very good equi- 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 distribution and people are realizing that now 
yeah, I voted in that uh, proposal and I got five. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie here, uh, but I did write 10 commandments to kill cyber farming. And for my audience, I will leave a link uh, in the description of this video uh, interview um, what I think should be done. I've been in this field for a very, very long time and I'm a sucker for best practice. So the fact that you used Osmosis uh, airdrop methodology is really good. And I think for the viewers, they now should know what was the thinking uh, behind this airdrop. Before I move to Pratik, one final thing on this particular topic, any alpha, would there be more airdrops? There will be one more. I mean, looking at all the dissatisfaction the divine community <laughs> expressed even after we dropped 10% of our genesis, we are planning one more airdrop. Uh, we are calling it loyalty drop. Yes. Uh, so it has to do with uh, showing your loyalty to Mandy Network. Uh, so stay tuned, you know, there is uh, something coming, coming, coming for DYM stakers again. Fantastic. So yeah. For the audience, uh, search for loyalty drops and you will know what, what you need to do. <laughs> but I'm not going to say more uh, <laughs> on that. Um, okay, maybe maybe let's switch gears a bit and maybe go to Pratik here. And yeah, I think my, my I always wonder, a monolithic chain like Solana is, is doing really, really well. You know, there are so many dApps being built. There is so much funding and, and everything is, seems to be falling in place for Solana. Um, and, and yeah, with, with Fire Dancer coming, I think the, the speed and everything will, will go through the roof. But why Dim, uh, Pratik? Uh, and wh why did you choose uh, Dim? Uh, uh, so I think I'll answer this in two folds. So first of all, why a rollup? Uh, and the second, why a dimension as a rollup, right? Uh, so when we started uh, building Panda Network, uh, the vision is to have multiple dApps which you know serves uh, to the community and uh, they all utilize some sort of credibility mechanisms and uh, it's not like there is one platform uh, w which in itself will be called as manga network there will be like uh, more than 10 or even hundreds of dApps right which will fit into this theme so it's not like uh, we can build it as a single dApp on a chain it's not possible at all so that's when uh, the rollup the rollup thesis comes in, and we decided that we are going to build a rollup which will serve all these apps on a single platform and create a network of all the credibility based applications and the scores as well. Now coming to dimension, so uh, while uh, when we started building, right, we first built an L1 on Cosmos SDK. Uh, then we also experimented with multiple uh, L2 stacks. There are multiple in the market. Or there is Optimism stack, there is Polygon CDK, there's Arbitrum stack, a lot of them. So finally, we decided that uh, uh, going with Dimension will help us in multiple ways. Uh, few being that, uh, you know, the infrastructure management is something which how Dimension has built is very easy for anyone to launch a rollup. So uh, we, we just focus on building our core business logic and principles and we don't have to worry much about the infrastructure, management of the chain and you know, uh, everything which goes into it, manage, uh, figuring out consensus related issues, networking related issues. So all those goes away for us. Okay. So that's why we chose Dimension. So just a question related to that to you Pratik as well. Was it a permissioned or unpermissioned uh, deployment? So the uh, the mainnet that we're going to launch is going to be a permission deployment, uh, okay. which will pass through a pro proposal via governance on the Dimension community. Sure. Uh, but just to uh, add to this, Dimension is again coming up with an upgrade, uh, sure, yeah. you know, which is called 3 d upgrade, which will uh, enable permissionless deployments. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, just wanted to uh, get that away. Uh, okay. Yeah, so thanks. Uh, another quick question then, um, in terms of timeline, maybe Pratik, you can take this as well, please. Um, so I, I already see when I go to the app, uh, I see the testnet. So what are the timelines? When uh, will have uh, we will have the mainnet? What is the timeline here? Yeah, so testnet, uh, as you know, is already running, and uh, it'll last for another you know, three weeks. Uh, mainnet we are targeting to launch by June mid to end June. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's when mainnet will come out and the same app that we have on testnet will go live along with that uh, so yeah that, that's the timeline for the mainnet okay fantastic uh great 
then let's go back to Sandeep here and maybe just ask <laughs> again I, I don't 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 just relax what are the dApps building on uh, Monday Network and you know I, I read about P2P X which is doing I think I checked the Dune Analytics it was five hundred thousand already peer to peer transfers so question part number one is what are the dApps building on um, uh, Monday Network and then again when these dApps are bringing in value how does it go to the MAND token right so uh, firstly I mean which are these dApps right so I mean we, we have a whole uh, uh, you know theme we, we, were, we are actually building in themes now credibility is our core theme now we are looking at opportunities and saying hey uh, this opportunity is more relevant for the community and consumers right now if we build this and make this a billion dollar dApp mm -hmm. uh, then you know that means more opportunities to build more other dApps as well as you know the community value goes up right so so what we finally sort of after sort of constructing these zero to one journeys for many dApps over the last one year uh, where we saw a lot of value uh, being acquired is two, two key projects one is p2px uh, like, like you said p2px is a fully decentralized uh, peer to peer crypto to fiat on off ramp what that means for DY, DYM community is you can actually like uh, from your DYM portal on your DYM wallet whatever tokens you have without going to a centralized exchange you can directly sell them in dimension itself uh, right or you can buy into them from your bank account into dimension directly right uh, that's the beauty of P2PX uh, at the moment it launches on our rollup sorry to cut you off here Sandeep this is really risky territory because the first question comes to my mind is how will the banks allow it? Like they, they will see what's going on. Yeah, it's completely peer to peer. You know, the moment we start uh, putting up a credibility score on every dimension user uh, and tell, hey, these are the guys with good credibility scores and they are worthy of doing transactions along with. If they want to sell, you do a buy order with them. If they want to buy, you do a sell order with them, right? So it, it, it's it's fully decentralized peer-to-peer -peer way of on-off ramp. Okay. There is no middleman. There is no uh, there is no uh, bank account, uh, third party escrow, nothing. It's like dimension community ranked by credibility scores being matched with each other to do peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Sorry That's again, I am getting distracted here. But what if someone doesn't send money? Yeah. So so Mande uh, pro credibility SDK. Uh, it ships with a couple of features. One is uh, the whole credibility rating scoring feature, which will sort of make sure that the people we are dealing with are trustworthy. There is also a dispute resolution bridge, uh, you know, which, which the protocol itself. Uh, so the dispute resolution bridge can solve it. There is also ZK credentials. So there is this new tech that we are integrating into the SDK where you can submit a ZK proof of whether a bank transaction happened or not from, from your internet banking account. That is from Web2 to Web3. You can push a credential, right? So, using a combination of all of this, a dispute can be resolved. Uh, and, in case such a dispute. and let's say the the person runs away and says, "I don't care about my on-chain credibility score." Would the user be protected? They will be because the escrow, the the, the, till the transaction is complete, the crypto is basically staying in the escrow. Sure, sure, got it, got it. Okay, okay, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. So, uh, Sandeep, let's let's uh, let let Pratik uh, take on the micro lending because I also read. So, I'm a. I, I don't know if you guys did a due diligence on me, but I am a scientist in my day job, and uh, publishing is part and parcel of what I do. And I love my uh, day job, and I'm an academic. And I, I see you guys have cited Muhammad Yunus, one of my uh, role models, uh, won the Nobel Peace Prize, introduced the concept of Grameen Bank. Something very similar to Tan days in, in Mexican uh, groups where you can lend $1,000, uh, you put it in a pool, everyone gets 1000 every month for six months uh, and, and then it, it basically is a trust, uh, trust peer-to-peer -peer, uh, trust score system and if, if someone yes. betrays that, they get kicked out uh, of that group. So uh, Pratik, I want, to take, uh, I want you to take this question on and I read uh, this, um, you know, micro lending. Uh, is there a project building on on uh, Monday Network, or you guys are building that as well? So uh, there are an, uh, anonymous developers in our community who are building this project. It's called Zero Lend, right? And uh, again, the inspiration of this. Uh, so we laid the inspiration first, and then a couple of uh, developers shown interest in building this, right? So uh, again. Uh, 
me and sandeep we quite we, we meet frequently and sandeep is staying in a village in andhra right so when i visit uh, we, we usually she uh, uh, there are a lot of people villagers who are you know crowded in front of banks and they want to run their business but uh, they don't have the capital so what they do is they 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 bring few few friends of them who are already uh, connected with the bank and are trusted so bank will see that okay this guy came via these trusted people so bank is loan to this guy also now he'll give uh, in a very small quantity let's say 1000 inr in the morning hmm. and then this guy can repay the loan back within a week or even within 3 to 4 weeks max uh with with some apy of course now uh this is when we uh, you know we took the inspiration of this idea and uh, we sandeep is more into uh, the whole citation of uh, mohammed yanus and the you know the read up of the past history was done by sandeep and uh, the final inspiration that we led out on monday came again uh, after seeing all these villagers you know actually doing that uh, following that process in the village and uh, running their business you know uh, earning bread for the family yeah. so we realized this is a very good uh, fit for mandir network as a whole and uh, that's when you know the the thing came out uh, conclusion okay fantastic uh, sandeep you want to add something to that yeah definitely so basically uh, the idea here is i explained you about p2p app which is a decentralized way of on off ramp now if you take a lot of real world uh, users they don't understand a lot of them don't understand crypto yet especially when you're talking about villagers or people in africa nigeria somewhere right like you know who are probably uneducated as well they don't understand crypto so we are thinking about these people how can we lay a bridge through mandate chain to these guys right so that so p2px acts as your on off ramp you know you sort of do all your banking and transaction and stuff like that on 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 the chain then you offer amp real world money into their bank accounts when they take a loan right when they when they pay back the loan again you on ramp right so if you look at p2px zero lend with underlying credibility it's all connected system talking to a single customer at the end of the day right so so i want to highlight that okay. uh, you know we started with the customer and work backwards uh, you know uh, we are about consumer crypto it's yeah, a it's a beautiful it's it's a beautiful thoughts in the but i can tell you many of the academics i work with they don't know crypto <laughs> the educated people don't know crypto <laughs> and you are uh, trying to Wait. reach to the uneducated ones so uh, it's a, it's a lofty lofty uh, aim that will require a lot of manpower women power uh, cooperation power so pratik what, what what are are you guys planning to expand the team or uh, what is the future plans to to make this vision a reality so um, i'll be honest right till now uh, it's been a very lean team um, we we built uh, a lot of stuff and uh, you know a lot of people from community actually shown interest from uh, their side that they want to contribute and uh, there are a lot of people who already contributed to you know code base of mandate the proof of credibility sdk and p2px as well so uh, we want to keep the same spirit uh, and uh, go by the you know taking as many people from the community as possible mm-hmm. who actually understands what we are trying to do and uh, you know the visions are aligned very well so uh, sure for sure we are expanding and uh, the the most of the emphasis towards uh, hiring from the community itself that's great and if, if you get a discord channel for example right like there are a lot of regional groups we start building regional groups and then we will start attesting all these re- members of real groups using the credibility scores again right so you have these regional groups your credibility scores so tomorrow if, you know it, it's not us who will be building zero land somewhere in africa it will be some we will be building protocol and deploying it on the chain while somebody actually implements it on the ground somewhere else right the, the, that's the way we are going to build it yeah that's 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 a noble uh, very difficult challenge but i i look forward to to seeing the progress uh, there so uh, of course uh, for for any any protocol to be built uh, any project to be expanded you need uh, funding so sandeep can you explain what is the funding situation how many vcs have invested how much you have raised and your plans for follow on uh, funding so we uh, so we we raised a uh, good amount of capital 2 years back uh, that too from a bunch of founders 
of course cosmos ecosystem itself okay uh, you know so one of the founders who helped us at the start is uh, the founder of asset mantle and persistence uh, mm-hmm. e- uh, ecosystem so so we raised some money from the founders of this ecosystem we have a lot of support from uh, this person called alani kui who is the chief of growth at akash networks so so we we raised a small founder round it's it's basically founders helping founders sort of around mm-hmm. you know which gave us the which gave us a very long runway i cannot disclose the uh, sure. uh, uh, you know a lot of details about how much we raised but the idea also here is you know we also want to build a community protocol uh, at the end of the day so we so far we worked as a really lean team with a good runway in, in front of us so the basics are covered now the prosperity of the community further how the growth of the team happens will depend on uh, how mandir rolls out you know uh, well, after this after this phase. okay fantastic that's that's good to hear and it's great that you have support from the cosmos founders so yeah absolutely brilliant one of the most hotly debated thing among the retail community at the moment is you have you know even with dim uh, you have the top 2 uh, <laughs> vcs are the top 2 <laughs> validators of the network uh, similarly for saga similarly for tia um so are, are these founders under a cliff and does cliff means cliff yes they are under a cliff and uh, let me tell you we only diluted 2.5% of our genesis pool to these founders okay uh, so 97.5% is still free for community ecosystem uh, protocols and stuff like that only 2.5% uh, this 2.5% is also clipped for 6 months and vested over 3 years from now after the launch and just to uh, clarify so- just to clarify sorry sandeep the cleft tokens can't be staked they can be staked on governance uh, fantastic yeah. yeah that's so okay. for listeners of this channel uh, i think this is one of the best economics and models i have seen where actually the community it's up to the community to do whatever they want to do with the protocol it's up to the community to make local groups to use p2px to use the proof of credibility it's up to the community so i think i really like uh, whatever you have just uh, told me so uh, anything else you want to add to that before we move on so uh we we believe in the community spirit uh, there is been some there is been some bad rap about uh, you know our airdrop the whales got very little even the small guys got little man uh, please understand that the overall token supply is itself is small we try to do justice to everybody over whales it's for the equanimity we believe in uh, so don't misunderstand it this is to create long term value for all of us uh, you know i mean that's all oh, <laughs> fantastic i honestly i I, I really like uh, what I've just heard, and I hope the community also likes. Uh, it's a breath of yeah. fresh air, you know. You don't have two yeah. top VCs being the top <laughs> validators, yeah. milking staking rewards. VCs. So it's yeah. really, really good for a change in Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, we have really good breath of uh, fresh uh, air. Okay, uh, you will be both very pleased that we are towards the end of the interview. <laughs> so uh, just. Okay, let's let's switch uh, gears a little bit. Um, what do you like to do in your free time, Pratik? Your hobbies. Tell me. Uh, uh, in my free time, I like to go on bike rides. Uh, my first priority. Uh, I I love it when you know I'm when I'm in highway. There is no one to catch me. The so, air. So so it just just face. just for the audience sake, uh, Pratik is in India. Bike in India means motorbike, and I used to have Royal Enfield three yeah. fifty. Bike in West means cycle. <laughs> so just for the audience, uh, what Pratik means is motorbiking. Go on, Pratik. Yeah, and then uh, I love uh, hiking as well. Uh, so once in a while, I go around for hikes, uh, trips, and uh, I also like to read about uh, tech stuff, whatever happening new in the space. That is also one of my hobbies. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah, well, pretty much similar hobbies I would say. Uh over to you Sandeep. Uh what what do you do in your free time? So, I uh I live in a village first of all. Uh so very isolated, uh, very, very serene, beautiful place a part of India. Uh where there's a very good internet connection, but that's all. You know, everything around me is not about computers and blockchain. It's about real people, nature and all that. So, I really like nature. I go on swims. Uh, there is a nice reservoir near near me there is a, a beach near me there is there are mountains near me and all that so i i definitely have a lot of fun in the nature uh, number one 
uh, i also focus on my fitness do some bicycling uh, around around the village and all that uh, i do engage with a lot of my local community my dad is a politician here uh, locally so i also sort of pat an eye towards going on with my community and stuff like that so this is what pretty much what i do <laughs> oh fantastic uh, yeah. <laughs> this is great and um i i back when it was all uh, telangana was not split i uh, used i give I used to give talks Actually, I've worked in CCMB. I don't know if you know CCMB Hyderabad, but I I, I have uh, I I know those parts of the world uh, very well. And yeah, it's very serene. It's very beautiful. So yeah, well done. Okay, we are towards the end. Any? No, no, we should also discuss your hobbies. <laughs> My hobby. So I I I yeah. So pretty similar to Pratik. In the evening, uh, I would love to read about tech uh, and everything. During day nine to five, I'm really busy with teaching. So I teach in. a big medical school so i te- train doctors year 1 year 2 and also i'm a scientist so we have uh, all the machine learning artificial intelligence ai models into heart diseases chronic kidney disease so on so forth so this is my evening hobby uh, but i am very very passionate uh, about football so i coach football uh, i have three children so yeah i i am a very very busy man to, from early morning right up to midnight uh, and i love it you know it doesn't feel like a job it doesn't feel like work if you love it so yeah awesome yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So. okay it's guys what have you yeah, yeah it's, it's turning out to be my interview now okay okay sandeep go on <laughs> So it's, it's about how you sort of you know prioritize things in your life and uh, yeah, straight for the first date deep work uh, sandeep when when you yeah. I, i don't uh, so switch your phone off for whatever uh, i think distractions it's a really really important especially you are a founder now so distractions don't deep work if you are doing something for an hour concentrate on that you know i, I for example I, this weekend my priority was to know everything about mandi network I, i did not let anything get in between but now i i i i'm confident i'm talking to you so yeah back yourself with facts maths knowledge uh, yeah so Yeah it's 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 great. Okay guys, no it's your interview not mine. So uh closing okay. remarks uh first Pratik and then we will end with Sandeep. Sure. Uh yeah I think I I'd like to repeat what uh, you know Sandeep mentioned uh, as a few while back. I think uh, the airdrop uh, that we did uh community was not really happy the stakers most importantly but uh, you know the team behind it is uh, what what we are trying to build in long term uh, uh, keep the projects you know sustainable and uh, attract the people that we want on the network uh, and build their credibility uh, with us yeah. yeah just want to add to the long term bit uh, we are really thinking long term even even our personal incentives uh, in doing this project are vested over next 3 years that's when we start seeing a lot of rewards for the work we have created uh so we intentionally uh, aligned our incentives long term uh so th- that applies to all of us as a community uh you know if we want to create value and make human beings valuable on blockchain it's going to take some time you know that's when we start seeing value just hold up with patience support the community we will all see rewards we all we're all going to make it <laughs> thanks a lot taranjit you know i mean uh, it means a lot uh, for somebody to have an intellectual depth like you and take the time and effort to put in this uh, you know interview for us means a lot uh, for us as well as the community thanks a lot fantastic yeah. okay on this happy note <laughs> let's end this interview uh, thank you very much uh, sandeep and thank you very much pratik uh, founders of mandi network uh, mandi network testnet is live uh, mainnet is coming in june uh, if my ears heard everything correctly and a breath of fresh air in cosmos a breath of fresh air in terms of rollups so yeah i'm really really excited and with this taranjit out <laughs>